Hey there, my gorgeous friends on the internet. Hope you're having a wonderful day today. I want to talk about a killer feature that has recently been added to Cloudflare that I honestly think separates them quite a bit from all the different hosting providers out there. Uh, and I'm just so excited to build out all my future applications on this platform. I should also probably clarify it. If I'm sponsored by Cloudflare, I'm not. Uh, do I wish to be sponsored by Cloudflare? Fuck yeah, I wish to. Come on, come on, pass me some of that DDoS money. I know you have enough. Um, but let me kind of give you my journey into like how I got into this platform and kind of like the amazing features that provide that I just kind of find anywhere else. And then also kind of show you what I've been working on. So as a content creator, years ago, you know, I, I pretty much tried out most of them. I tried out hosting my own VPS. I tried out Netlify. Um, a couple of years ago, I was teaching a lot of Next.js, so naturally I gravitated, gravitated over to Vercel. Uh, but I still was missing a couple of really key features for what I wanted to build. So you probably know Cloudflare as the people that provide you that free DDoS, which is like what I know them for. Uh, but since I started building out this course platform, um, I wanted a way to stream, uh, stream videos and stream them at high quality as well, stream them really cheap. And once you start looking into that, you'll realize that you don't have too, too many options. You do have Mux, that's one option out there. Uh, but from my experience, just running tests on this, it can get quite pricey. Another good option, a better option in my opinion, is uh, Bunny C CDN, what's their name? Bunny.net. Uh, the pricing here was actually fantastic. And I probably would push people to, to use this uh, instead of Mux if you want like a real affordable way to stream video online. And I know like code, coding with Antonio also was on Bunny if I'm not mistaken. So this is a really good solution. However, I wanted to make a bunch of videos and I, I also kind of wanted to stick with one platform. So I didn't want to use Bunny and then use Vercel or use Bunny and then use whatever Cloudflare. Uh, but Cloudflare had R2. And the thing with R2 is when I was reading into it, I realized that they have free egress. So you could essentially pop all your videos in the bucket and then stream it for free. So you can stream 4K videos and it's like pennies to the dollar. And that just like blew my mind. So I started getting into that and I started like encoding my own uh, videos. Let me just show you here quickly. If I go over to NVIM1 here, uh, as you can see, I have a script here that says HLS encode. So this essentially takes an MP4 video and it generates all these different resolutions. And it basically outputs this M3U8 playlist. So I just take this and essentially sync it to my R2 bucket. And then from there, I can stream it pretty much for free. So I wanted to find a way to get like the cheapest way and also like a really fast way to do it. And this has caching as well. So it works really, really well. Now about, you probably might wonder, okay, if you're hosting the videos and stuff like that, since it's from a bucket, it's a public bucket, right? Uh, you cannot protect it. Well, you can protect it as well, which is super cool. Not only you can cache it, uh, but they have like this, these like WAF rules that you can set up, which kind of acts like a like signed URL thing. So it's just amazing. So that blew my mind. Uh, and then this was like a year or two ago. Workers was still like not there yet, but like I feel like in the last year or so, they really started pushing it more and more and they added so much, so many features and like all the frameworks are pretty much supported. So it's like they added like the Cloudflare V plugin, even though that still like doesn't work in time stack start yet, but um, this is coming out soon, but it just made it so accessible uh, to like create these full stack applications. So I was like really excited uh, just for this feature alone, honestly. And I highly recommend you to just try it out I'll leave a link down in, in the description and just see how fast this streams. If you go here to the one of these pr preview videos uh, and just like play it and see how it streams and you'll be surprised how quick it is. And this like automatically switches the quality and stuff like that. So that was great. Now, further on, I wanted to expand this. I thought to myself, well, just doing courses, it's not gonna be too interesting. It's not gonna be enough. 
uh, for a product. So I started doing the challenges. Uh, this looks ugly here. Don't worry, I'll, I'll have this changed. Uh, but I started doing the CSS battle challenges. And this ended up being really cool. Uh, and I'm like, I keep expanding on it and uh, adding new features to it. But the idea behind it is, let me just log in here quickly, is that you get these nice components that you're supposed to recreate. So you have like this ShadCN component here, right? You have a notification pop-up, this one, this one, right? I added a new one here. I'll keep adding a bunch to, to this uh, for you guys to experiment. Uh, and it works in like light, light and dark mode as well. Uh, but if I go on here, as you can see, you have your solution and then you have the final match solution. Let me switch it back to dark mode. That's a bit uh, bothersome. So you can also switch uh, to split view here so you can see both solutions. And I added like the div here so you can style it with CSS. And I also added a uh, tailwind mode now. So you can do class here, for example, equals to BG red 200. And this works now as well. So that's super cool. But this didn't like require anything special uh, because you can just process this all on the client. So I'm using essentially a, a thing called a pixel match to, to compare two canvases here, essentially. It's two iframes here, but they get saved as canvases and those get compared and then you check the pixel value and that's great. So that was fine, but I wanted to extend this to kind of make challenges that teach you how to program. Now, this says JavaScript here, but this is gonna be extended to learning Go, for example, learning JavaScript, learning C++, for example. And to do something like that, it becomes quite complicated because you cannot simply run user code uh, on the client or, you know, just set up a server yourself and then just let the user run uh, code there. So basically you're given a challenge. I just set up kind of like a lead code style char challenge here, for example, uh, but this is gonna get changed. This is just like still testing here. But essentially you can come here and write JavaScript and run this and submit it. And as you can see, uh, it gets evaluated. And then in this case, two out of three tests have passed. Now, how would you actually hook up something like this? In a serverless environment, you're so limited with so many things. One is the duration, right? You cannot have these running, running for a long time, um, right? And if you run any serverless, whether it's like AWS Lambda, um, Vercel, whatever. Now you could set up your own VPS and run the user code there, uh, but then it's like, it becomes really complicated with all the security features as well, because they could just go in and write some code here, right? And funny delete your whole, whole server. So you need a bit more isolation. Uh, and recently Cloudflare introduced, where is it? Here, <laughs> containers. So these can say containers are essentially, they, they're built on a platform called Firecracker, which are just V8 isolates uh, in a virtual machine. So you can instantiate these super quickly and run your user code here. And it's just been the best experience ever. And I'm just so excited, it's still in beta. You need to get like a pro plan or whatever for it, which is like $5 a month, so it's not bad at all. But it enabled me to create to create like this leads code style um, challenges here, which I think is super cool. And again, like I could run anything here. You're not limited to JavaScript. I can run Go code. I can run C++, C Sharp, whatever I want to run into. I'll show you the code as well in just a second. Uh, but like I can run return. Let me just show you here. This is a two sum problem. I'm, I'm just gonna add one two here to kind of show you. If I hit submit, as you can see, these containers are offline right now. If I go here to instances and active, and it just spins up for the duration of this execution. So as you can see, score zero, one out of three tests have passed. And if we look here, it's running, so it goes active. And this is like the best thing ever, uh, because if you set up your own VPS, that's gonna run forever, right? It's just gonna keep running and running and running. 
with these, you have like so like good fine control of how long you want to run these. You can run these for five minutes and then make them go inactive. And then you don't need to in incur any cost for it, which is a big deal. And then you can also specify like multiple different instances uh, that you want to create. And these are all using like Cloudflare's edge, edge system as well. Uh, so as you can see here, yeah, one out of, th out of these three tests have uh, passed. Now, if we wait a little second here, this is gonna go offline. But let me just show you how you can set this up as well, really quickly, it hasn't went off. Uh, if I go here over to NVIM tree, so you essentially create a worker for this as well. So you have a basic worker. If I just go over here to my index.ts, as you can see, this is just returning a fetch request here, and I'm passing down this tstack code runner. So before I show you that, we also have this let me zoom in this little class here that you can extend. So you can specify like which port you wanna run this container on and how after how much duration do you want this to start sleeping? So as you can see, I specify one minute. So probably after a minute, uh, this is gonna go offline. As you can see, it stopped as well. And you're gonna see it also goes inactive. But you essentially set up a worker here. And this is, I just set up a simple HANO app for this example. And let me just go down here. And as you can see, this is making a request over to container health, container info, container load balance, et cetera. So I have a couple here set up, but we run this await, and this is essentially checking, it's just doing a fetch request to that container. Now, where is the container? This is in a separate folder here, up here, which has a Docker file. So as you can see here, I'm just installing bun. Again, you can install go, you can install whatever you want on this. I'll actually put a GitHub down in the description. It's from Backpine Labs. He has a great example that runs Python as well in go. Uh, I think that's like a good starting point for you. As I'm not gonna set up a new one. That's a great one already there. Shout out to Backpine Labs, he's awesome. Uh, but that's it. And then here, I just have this execute code function that gets ran. Now, when it comes to running user code, there's quite a bit of things that you need to keep in mind. Let me just go through that as well quickly. First of all, you don't want the user to be able to do fetch requests, right? So we can patch that by replacing the global this and throwing an error, web sockets as well, uh, XML, HTTP requests as well, and like requiring stuff and stuff like that. And this is just getting passed down from my React application. And I also have some test cases that I set up specifically. So like here, right, you just don't wanna be able to pass down the result directly. You wanna be able to, you know, have different test cases. So I, as you can see, the passed with one and two, but if th there's a different input in, then it should have a different result. So that's why I was just kind of stopping you from just like hacking your way through this function. Now. Another thing you need to keep in mind is when you're doing stuff like this is you also want to like, how can people fuck this up, right? You can do a while, a while loop, for example, while true, and then run something here, right? That's going to block the main thread. So this is kind of like what sucks as well with security reasons. If you do end up doing your own VPS uh, to kind of do user executed code, because then basically everything gets stopped, right? This is gonna run permanently. It's gonna block the rest of the code and you're not gonna be able to get in new requests. So with like these VM isolates, you're still getting a, a level of security that you wouldn't get with a normal VPS. Uh, and that's great because then that specific instance could fail and then you can just pin up a new one and everything still continues to work. So that's a huge advantage. But how would you like get through stuff like this, like running a while true loop? Don't use eval, okay? Eval sucks. Eval, you might see this. Uh, essentially, okay, they do give you a warning, that's nice. Executing JavaScript from a string is an enormous risk. It is far too easy for a bad actor to run arbitrary code, right? So you could do eval plus two plus two, for example, and then you get the output. Well, what you can do instead, in this case, I'm, I'm doing it with bun, but you can do it with node as well, is you can spin up these sub processes and that way you're not blocking the main thread. So if I go down here, let me just quickly show you this as well. As you can see, I can do bun spawn 
and I can pipe in the, the user code in here. And then what I can do is run this, but I can also have another sub process that's actively is going to try to kill it if it passes a certain duration of time. So this is like your safeguard here. That's after whatever amount of timeout MS I set here, it's just going to kill that sub process for you. And this way, even if I have while true here, let me show you uh, while true console log woo, let's hit submit. You're going to see this is going to spin up. As you can see, it, it stops it. So there we go. It failed. This is going to run, but we're going to check back in a second and you're going to see that it's still going to go inactive. We can probably see this in the logs as well here. Let's see. Executing code. It's not showing the logs yet, but we're going to get this uh, execution uh, timed out killing process message. So there we go. We can use that as well. And the fantastic thing is you can also limit the memory cap. So you may also think that the user is going to pass down something huge and enormous, like, uh, you know, like a really big array or whatever. So you, it's really nice because you can also limit the memory uh, size of the sub process. So there we go. The, the code is not nothing too crazy. I'm sure like I missed a couple of stuff. Again, that's why I'm not releasing it yet. Uh, but it's just such a wonderful experience to just set up a quick container here. You pop in the Docker file and things just work fine. And the way it works is, is you have this worker. So you still have a, a worker here in the root that essentially like communicates with that container. And what's the nice thing about this is with Wrangler and a worker, it's so easy to set up like a rate limiter and stuff like that. I've done these so many different times where you can just go in your Wrangler here and, and let me just do worker rate limiter. Like this is a good thing now. You just specify this like this. You say it's still in beta. That's why it says unsafe here. But you can just add the limit, add the period and it just works. And then you can specify the paths that you want to rate limit, and that's it. That's all you have to do. Um, I've just been having a, a great experience with this, and I just wanted to share it with you. Uh, so hope you enjoyed this little episode. This, again, is like kind of lead code style. I have these challenges set up, but essentially what I want to do is a guided way to teach you how to program in TypeScript and Go and etc. So it would like teach you, okay, let's spend some time with the filter or the map function. And I'd show you different examples because in the age of AI, I still think that just tabbing and hitting enter and code does like give you brain rot. And from my experience with learning code, the best way I found it is if I type stuff out and I actually see what I'm doing and the effect that it's having. So I feel like if I set up like really cool challenges that like shows you, okay, map, okay, where, where is this useful? What kind of chat, what kind of like problems I could run into that would solve a specific solution. And then you can run the code as well. And I think I also added, I'm not sure why this is not, uh, I don't think I have the latest version, but I also have like a console output here. So you can actually see like what your code is doing. Um, and I think that's like a really good learning experience. Uh, let's see, did the container stop? And it stopped. See, it went completely inactive, even though we run that while true. So anyway, uh, super excited about this. I'll let you know the more progress I'm making onto this. It's, it's not going to be released yet as I want to do some really cool challenges. But if you're interested in trying it out, I will need a couple of people to experiment with this. Uh, so if you want to go on my X page and just shoot me a message, I'm happy to give you access and like play around with this. Uh, yeah, that's going to be it for me today. Thank you again so much for watching. If there's one thing only I ask from you, drop a little like in this video and I'll catch you in the next one. All right, take care.